I want you to see this because when you make it, you're gonna wanna take a picture too. And so what I like to do is get it right. I flip the phone upside down. If you can see that, boom. All right guys, welcome back to the Wicked Kitchen. I am gonna show you today how to do the most amazing vegan pulled pork sandwich. And I'm gonna use the king oyster uh, mushrooms, the orangues. So I've already started just because I couldn't wait. You can do this also, I've seen it done with like jackfruit and other kind of mushrooms. You can actually use the cluster mushrooms to do this as well if you pull apart all the leaves. Um, they're a little bit more uh, wet, so it might take a little bit longer to cook in the oven. These ones I find are perfect for what we're doing. So I'm only gonna use, I bought a bunch of these. I'm gonna use six, all right? So they tend to sell them in Tesco and packs of three. If you haven't seen this link over here with the three techniques for uh, how to cook orangos three different crazy ways, check out this link here. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to pull this again, all right? Super easy, you need a fork and you need a mushroom and you need a cutting board. So just gonna, run the fork along the fibers of the mushroom and you can find you know my full crazy boring exciting however you think of it uh, explanation on that other recipe link that we showed i'm just going to pull these across just like this and look at that it already looks like shredded chicken just do this quickly you can do this ahead of time you can put them in a bag storm have them ready to go sometimes I'll just have this ready and I'll pull it apart in a second. Just like doing a lot of prep of it, uh, prepping of it. <clears throat> have fun with it. Really get in there and rip that, rip it up. <clears throat> Always use, <clears throat> make those sound effects, you know. <clears throat> get in there, it's awesome. Okay, so pulling it, now it's starting to make a mess. I'm just, if it makes too much of a mess, I kind of get a little frazzled. So I need to clean up a little bit. Easy to do, and clean the brush. Scrub it off, shake it, <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Now then, let's have some fun. Now I just take the rest of it and just break it apart, pull it apart, see that? So I don't have a ton of time. I wanna make this in less than 30 minutes and have a delicious, oops. I usually go by the five second rule, but I'm not gonna do that today. So again, just ripping the, the head off the mushroom, pulling those little fibers and muscly parts out. It's perfect, awesome. So I'm gonna, I'm almost done this, but I'm gonna light this stove here. So you guys, there's several different ways to do this. We've developed many different ways to cook these. This particular recipe, it works very well when we're gonna heat this up in a pan quickly, and then we're gonna toss it in the barbecue sauce, and then we're gonna finish it off in the oven. And I, I wanna heat it up in the pan because I wanna get this a nice quick sear on it and a, some crispy bits going. Uh, and I'm gonna clean this up quickly. Let's wash the old brush. That's the fun part of all this. Shake it off. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Now then. So we got this going. We want to get the pan wicked hot, you guys. I'm gonna use a little bit of oil here. Probably about three tablespoons. So I'm not too worried about adding a little bit of the oil here because there is no oil and no fat in these mushrooms. So I want to introduce that aspect to it and it's part of the mouthfeel it's part of the whole craft of uh, cooking and you know chef chefing around whatever you want to do so uh, seasoning let's see I'm gonna use a little bit of granulated garlic so about a half a teaspoon of granulated garlic I'm not adding regular garlic in here I don't want it to burn on there it's garlic <coughs> I bet you hate garlic don't you no I like garlic I like to use the spices I'm also using this pork seasoning again. So this is vegan 
pork seasoning, right? It just says that silly word on there. I'm gonna try to change that and I continually will say that. Uh, and it's just a blend of sage and onion and garlic and dried pepper and yeah. So I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna guesstimate that I'm using two tablespoons, but I'm gonna liberally use it, all right? Don't be scared of the seasoning. And I'm gonna just use another, about a half a teaspoon of salt. And did I add black pepper to that? I don't think I did, so. I really enjoy the black pepper, so I'm gonna use a good half teaspoon of that. All right, so that's going. The pan is hot. Perfect. Stir this up a little bit with the tongs and just right onto the skillet. Make sure you get all those spices in there. All right, save this bowl because I'm gonna use it for the next thing. Do a quick cleanup. Uh, pick up that fork. Oh God, I'm getting old, you guys. I'm gonna just put this in the sink. Okay, listen, I'd appreciate it if you guys kept it down, okay? Because uh, Nikki's gonna get the results of her blood test back today. For this dish as well, I'm gonna, I wanna serve it. I'm gonna do a sandwich. Sandwich, sandy, sarny, sandwich, what? Sandwich, sandwich. Trying to learn how to pronounce my letters so I can sound more proper. But that doesn't always work well. I'm gonna do potatoes, potatoes. Um, it's so funny because ever since moving to the UK, it, I focus on how I pronounce things because I hear everybody else talking around me and it makes me feel like I'm not pronouncing things right, but then I know I am. It's, it's pretty funny. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven seems like a good number. Slice them in half. So we're gonna do a black salt and black pepper potato, kind of like substitute for crisps. It's a little bit more healthier here. Touch of oil, because I want some seasonings to stick to it. And I said black pepper, so what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of salt. A fair amount of salt, you guys, so it's a good half teaspoon in there. I'm gonna use a pinch of the garlic, the granulated garlic. All right, maybe two pinches. Just get right in there with that. So I'm gonna do cracked black pepper for this. This fresh ground. And because I'm calling it out as black pepper potatoes, I'm gonna use a good amount of it. You can use as little or as much as you like. I like a lot. If I'm gonna call something black pepper, it's gonna have black pepper on it to the point where it's probably gonna be a little bit spicy. All right, so that's a good, I would say it's a good teaspoonful. And I wanna make sure all those spots are covered. Okay, so I've got that ready to go. I am just looking for something else to put this in. Hold on one second. Do you like to draw with crayons? I do. But I'm not very good at it. But it doesn't matter. It's just the fun of doing it that's important. One of the really great things, and I say this all the time, is by not cooking animal products, I do not have to worry about cross-contamination, okay? So I'm gonna use the same bowl that I Rolled the mushroom, pulled mushroom in with the potatoes. I'm gonna add those right back in here and not worry about it at all. So the mushrooms are smelling delicious. I haven't touched them. One of the things I really like to try is practice patience in a pan, I call it. And that's gonna be where you don't have to actually rapidly move it all the time. Let it sit there, let it sear, let those caramelizations happen, let the sugars really cooked down, brown, crisp. It's just, it's a great way to cook. And, oops, and I'm also gonna try to be a little bit more clean, clean. So you'll see as I turn it over, some of the brown bits really looking good. And thing about, you'll notice with these mushrooms is that they tend to expel a lot of water. So that just looks, and it smells delicious. You could just use this right as it is. You could use it as a stir fry. 
You could just add some vegetables to this. You know, this is great. This is a great base product where anything you would normally use, a pulled animal product, whether it was chicken or pork or whatnot, just use shredded mushrooms, all right? Or, or use jackfruit. There's, it's, we don't have to cook animals. This is one of the best ways to do it, with these mushrooms, right? All right, so we have the mushrooms. This is about as much as I want to cook them for now. I got the initial heat off of. You could eat them like this. They're going to be a little bit chewy. But I'm going to add the barbecue sauce, and we're going to roast them for a bit. So we're just putting those right in the pan. And then I'm putting the pan right back down, right? And I'm going to add a little bit of oil. So I want to make sure these potatoes are cooked right. I'm not going to clean out the pan too much. Just a little bit of oil, two tablespoons. Maybe I'm talking too fast because I'm trying to cook fast. Each one has dramatic details, terrific trim, precision paint jobs, plus incredible micro machine pocket play sets. There's a police station, fire station, restaurant, service station, and more. So I'm going to add those potatoes right to it. And I'm going to try to do them all face down. Put the oil around. All right, I don't mind that the mushroom bits are in there. The pan is it's just already seasoned with what was on the, the mushrooms. I like that seasoning. This is all going in one plate, so let's cook this for a minute. And I'm just going to clean up this for one second. Well, hey, the meal of the century looks like it's just about ready, so it's uh, time for spice. Yes, it's spice time, and the lucky spice is <gasps> paprika! We got the mushrooms in there. Now all I'm going to do is add the barbecue sauce. And you know what I might do, you guys? Let's hold on one second. If you haven't noticed, we're working in this amazing kitchen. There's a refrigerator over there I tend to walk to all the time. But this one right here, this golden classics has like... Whoa! Look at all the junk food. It's just full of beer. So I'm actually gonna use one of these beers in here. Hey, bud, <laughs> let's party. Wait a minute. Why do you want that beer so bad? Because he's thirsty, dummy. Bulls, we want the finest wines available to humanity. We want them here and we want them now. We're just gonna run over to Texarkana and pick up 400 cases of Coors. <laughs> All right, that was like the longest beer run ever. So I'm gonna use this brew dog again. I've used it in another video. I quite like this now. So just quick open, uh, quality check. I don't know. Save one of those beers for me, eh? Okay, okay. It's good. This stuff is delicious. I'm just gonna add a little bit here. It's maybe three or four teaspoons, maybe. And all I wanna do is just use the rest of that barbecue sauce, mix it in here. This beer will add a little bit more flavor. You can use any barbecue sauce you want, you guys. I didn't name it because you know, whatever you want to do. You use whatever style. If you like it sweet, if you like it spicy, use whatever style barbecue sauce you like. I am just adding the beer, a little amount of beer to thin it out. It's never going to hurt anything and only going to make it better. Let me put this in the sink. Huh? Is the water going down, son? Uh, nope. Potatoes have been cooking very nicely here, sizzling away. Beautiful. We're gonna have nice crispy skin on that one side and then we're gonna throw them in the oven. So all I'm gonna do here is stir this up into that. So I have this pan. One of my pet peeves is these parchment paper. You buy parchment paper at the store and that stupid great thing that you rip it off with, it tends to always break. So 
Here's how I do it normally. I'll just hold it down like this. Knife. Slice. Boom. Easily done. Always use parchment paper. Wicked easy cleanup afterwards. Just throw it away after. No scrubbing. And I'm just gonna ooh, lay the barbecue right down, spread it out. And this is going in the oven. I'm shutting this pan off with the potatoes. That's going in the oven. Potatoes. Gorgeous. Nice, crispy on one side there, a little crisp on the other side. Making sure they're not stuck to the bottom. Those are gonna be amazing. And it smells so good. Putting this right in the oven. So you guys, I preheated the oven at 200 degrees Celsius. That's close to 400 degrees. I tend to like to cook things hot as you might have seen in some of the other videos. I just like that high heat and it just offers me the ability to cook a lot faster as long as you watch it. Um, and I like what it does. And what it does is it cooks the outer, gives it that char, burnt crispiness um, that I'm looking for and still chewy inside. So we will wait for that. And let me just clean up this stuff and we're gonna cook that for about 10 to 12 minutes in the oven, 200 degrees. I'll be right back. You thought we wouldn't have any fun. Shame on you. Only a couple minutes left for the to pull out the barbecue pull pork with the mushrooms. Uh, <laughs> the king oyster. Uh, I just cracked myself up because sometimes I just don't know what I'm cooking anymore. This, what I'm gonna do to show you how to bring this even next level is to make sure you have a nice soft squishy bun because we're gonna make a nice sandwich out of this. And first I'm gonna light the stove. So I have another pan, because the other pan, the other cast iron I have is in the oven with the potatoes in it. But I want this to be a little special. I feel like being indulgent. So you don't have to do this process, but you know, if you do, it's all the better. I'm gonna take a little bit of plant-based butter. Just a little bit here. And I'm gonna spread it onto the bun. What I'm gonna do is just make some toasted buns. Because I like going that next level. Again, you don't have to. If you don't think this is healthy, then don't eat it and make something else. Um, but if you wanna enjoy something that reminds me of what, how I used to, what things I used to enjoy, this is the way to do it. So what? I guess they just don't make them like they used to, huh? Mm. So that is getting nice and hot. I'm gonna check on the stove here. I'm gonna give the barbecue a quick stir because I'm gonna pull it out in a minute. Oh, it smells so good. And that's gonna come out in one minute. The timing is perfect. Let's heat these up. All right. So I'm gonna, while that's heating up, I'm pulling out the potatoes, potatoes. Ow. Gorgeous, hot AF. And the cold mushrooms, you guys. These look amazing. They smell delicious. Check this out. Let's just admire that for a second, okay? In fact, I'm gonna admire it so much that I'm gonna take a photo. Because that's what I like to do. Let's check that out. Probably see that on Instagram later on Wicked Healthy. So, oh yes, yes. I'm so excited to make this. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> get good, you can just practice that flip. Get it, come on baby, come on baby. 
Got it. He thinks he's Bruce Lee. Oh, you guys. If I could explain how good this smells like a backyard barbecue. No, don't get up. Hey, it smells delicious. It is ready. What? It is so freaking amazing. And I'm just gonna pile this on because I probably have one for later, but it's that sticky barbecue with that little bit of beer. Oh man, this is just gonna be heaven in a roll. Look at that. I got no problem adding a little bit more because I am sometimes a massive pig. Ziggy piggy, ziggy piggy. Do you like a pig? A little higher. Yay, I found a queen. Mommy's little piggy. <laughs> I'm just going to put this right on it like this. I'm going to take this piece because I want to try it. Oh, man. It's like... That is like incredible. And that looks amazing. Don't forget about the potatoes. We're giving all this love to the mushrooms. Potatoes, you guys, amazing right here. Again, leaving enough for the next day. Just, these are super good, super crispy. And you guys, that right there is probably the most unbelievable pulled pork you could possibly get with the pulled mushrooms. One of our amazing, wicked healthy techniques Developed it quite a few years ago. That whole technique is in a lot of our products that we sell into Tesco under the Wicked Kitchen range, and it's just freaking awesome. So you guys, until next time, subscribe, check out all our other episodes, um, join all the channels, follow us everywhere you can, leave a comment, press the like button, do all those cool things, and we will see you next time on the Wicked Kitchen, okay? Boom. You guys are awesome. Uh, if you talk to your mushrooms, they even taste better. <laughs> <laughs>